Hey everyone, I'm Kat Nakasawa. I'm WBEZ's audience engagement producer. And I'm Alex Keefe. I'm an editor on our government and politics desk. And today we're going to talk about the pizza stone. The pizza stone is a metaphor we talk about a lot at WBEZ when it comes to audience engagement. This is a metaphor that actually comes from Harkin's own Bridget Thorson. So thank you, Bridget. Basically, the idea is apparently the more you use a pizza stone, the easier it is to use and or the tastier your pizzas become. I've never used one, so I don't know. But you can see where we talk a lot about this when it comes to re-engaging audiences. So Kat's going to talk about pizza number one. So pizza number one was the Citizens Agenda project that we did this past fall. Um, We were asking our audience, what should your local elected officials be talking about? Um, And when we were thinking about the framework for this project, who we were trying to reach, um, we were taking the lens of equity, which our station had been um, doing a lot of coverage around this, you know, what areas of the city and what communities have been hardest hit by COVID. Um, So we looked at this in two senses, both health impact, so cases and death rates, and then also economic impact. We looked at first time unemployment claims. And so this led us to some key focus areas for outreach um, that sort of span the entire city from the far north side to the far south side to the western suburbs. You know, we did a bunch of different tactics um, on air and digitally for outreach, but the most effective was tabling in person with different community partners um, at food distribution events, back to school supplies, giveaways, and just, um, you know, a lot of census and voter outreach that was happening at that time. We sort of uh, piggybacked along with that. And by the end, we had over 2,200 questions um, with less, a little less than half coming from those target uh, zip codes. Um, A bunch of products came out of the project, including some feature stories in Spanish and English, um, and then three virtual town hall events where we really focused on super serving some communities that had been hardest hit by COVID. Um, So the network mapping exercise that helped us create the framework um, ended up helping inform which communities we did town halls with. So we did Little Village, Rogers Park, and then later in the spring, we partnered with Cicero Independiente, Um, to do a town hall for um, the Berwyn elections that were coming up. So then fast forward just a few weeks, and then in mid-December, vaccines started rolling out for COVID-19 in Illinois. And we said, hey, how can we engage folks with this? We have about half as much time to put together events and content on it. So we decided to reheat the pizza stone. Um, We were focusing this time mostly on Black and Latino areas of Chicago and Chicagoland. So a broader geography, but we did more targeted outreach with a narrower question. So we ended up doing actually less outreach work, but it was more focused on who we were trying to reach, communities that were really hesitant and had a lot of misinformation about COVID-19 vaccines. So we said, let's reheat the pizza stone. CAT re-engaged with several community organizations we partner with for our elections work. Um, We also made some new partnerships and got a little bit more creative about the types of organizations we had for community partners to help us reach our target audiences. Again, we did some in-person tabling. We did some paid social in order to reach out to people. We did not do on-air promos this time because we didn't want to cast a wide net. We were really more sight fishing, I guess you could say. We had several pieces of content that came out of this. We answered questions from Chicago's Latino communities about the vaccine. And we also did a similar event um, focused on Chicago's African-American communities. Um, We have these 90-second drop-ins where we're answering questions from folks on the air three days a week, three times a day. We made some tools that we translated to English and Spanish. And most impressively for our events, we had a huge uptick in number of people who attended. Uh, our Our event that focused on Chicago's Latino communities had more than 1,600 people at it, which was our biggest virtual event ever at WBEC. So what did we learn between pizza number one and pizza number two? Well, re-engagement reduced the prep time for pizza number two, which is great because we had about half as much time to put together this work, thanks to Kat's relationship building. Um, Pizza number one outreach got us more questions with a broader ask, but pizza number two outreach was way more efficient and it allowed us to close the loop with more audience members. Um, Also, pizza number two yielded way more live event engagement as we talked about. So the upshot for this whole thing is, you know, we found more success, I think, in many ways with pizza number two, when we had a narrower audience, a narrower ask, and we found some more resources to do translation work. And we really were able to have deeper engagement with that audience and hopefully provide more utility for those audiences as well. Delicious. (laughs) 